Hey everyone, Kelly Dean Allen here. Now then, earlier this year, Total Guitar and Guitar World Magazine posted a reader poll of the top 50 greatest guitar riffs of all time. Today, in this video, I'm going to show you how to play the top five from that list, which I suppose, according to them, would be the top five greatest guitar riffs of all time. Only one of these would be in my own personal top five, but that's neither here nor there, I guess. Uh, however, it's a classic list of some of the most well-known and recognizable guitar riffs in rock and roll history, and a pretty darn good list overall. Nothing particularly uh, disputable or shocking here to deal with. So with that said, if you want to learn Guitar World's top five greatest guitar riffs of all time, you're in the right place, because today I'm going to show you how they're all played in this one video. Let's get started. So then, Guitar World Magazine's number five greatest guitar riff of all time is Ain't Talkin' About Love by Mr. Eddie Van Halen from Van Halen's debut album. We are in standard tuning for this tutorial, however, the studio version of this one is down a half step. Eddie Van Halen often tuned down a half step, but for simplicity purposes, we're going to keep all of these tutorials in standard tuning. So if you want to play along with the studio version of this one, just tune your guitar down a half step. Great classic riff this, yeah? So, this one is all based around A minor. So we're going to hold an A minor chord here, and it's all palm muted. Uh, very unique. You know, we're palm muting all the way down to the high E string, which is kind of rare. Normally when you're doing any kind of palm muting, it's on the lower strings, right? But this riff, we're palm muting all the way down, and pretty much the entire riff is palm muted, except for this. Right? But everything else. Right? But those notes are not palm muted, but everything else is. So we're going to start with a palm muted open A. We're going to go down to the second fret of the D string, which we're holding as part of this A minor. All down strokes, and then we're going to go down to the first fret of the uh, B up to the second fret of the G, all being held in this A minor. Now you're going to lift your index off, grab the open E very quickly, and then drop your index onto the first fret, covering the B and the high E and then just ride up the strings, right back up to the G string. And then you're going to take your pinky and we're going to drop into G. You're going to drop your pinky onto the third fret of the high E and the B string. And then you're going to string skip all the way up to the low E string here and grab the third fret. Roll it down to the third fret of the A, off to two, hammer back on to three. Right? Not palm muted, like I said. And that's the riff. And you repeat it four times. And then we're into an A power chord. But we're still doing that, right? So we're going to grab an A power chord. We're going to hit it once. And then we're going to do a quick little down, up, down of a palm muted open A. And then you're going to hit the A power chord again. Then you're going to hit an open A, open E, and then drop into G. Right? Then you're going to go off to open E. Grab the three of the A, off to two, hammer back on to three. Repeat. And then you do the little lick, right? Grab the uh, fifth fret of the G, pick it twice, slide it into seven, slide it into nine, slide it into twelve. Right? Back to the A power chord. Just 
leading into the first verse. He's gonna jump up here to the seventh fret of the G, give it a full step bend, a couple of more pumps, and then we're into the first verse. So that is the riff to Ain't Talking About Love. That's that, so let's move on to number four. All right then, Guitar World Magazine's number four greatest guitar riff of all time is Smoke on the Water by Richie Blackmore and Deep Purple. Uh, we're still in standard tuning for this one and there's any number of ways you can play this uh, this riff. Uh, you can play it with a pick. Richie does not play it with a pick. He, uh, he plucks the notes. It's all double stops, right? <laughs> So I'm going to show you it with a pick, but know that Richie uh, plucks the notes with his two middle fingers. Kind of like that, right? It's, uh, it's a little more plucky. And uh, so we're starting with an open D, open G, and then we're going to drop onto a double stop on the third fret and move it on to the fifth fret. And then you're going to go open again, drop onto the three. You're going to go back to the five, but before you do, you're going to go to the six. And then just move it back to five, right? Then you're going to go open again, three, five, three, open, and then just let it ring. And that's the riff. Six, five, open, three, five, three, open, repeat. Now you can also play uh, the open D, open G right here. On the fifth fret of the A in the D string, right? Right, that's another way to play it. But uh, know that, if you want full authenticity, pluck those notes, right? And that's it for the riff. You repeat that any number of times at the beginning of this track, and then we drop into the uh, first verse. Right, we're just grabbing a three-finger G power chord. You're just going to ride down the strings. You know, a couple of times. Off to F, back to G. It's kind of loose. He's sometimes he's just hitting the G power chord, and other times he's riding down the notes, right? Right, and that's the verse, and that's the main riff, and uh, that's it for that one. So let's move on to number three greatest guitar riff of all time. Good then, Guitar World Magazine's number three greatest guitar riff of all time is Back in Black. Malcolm and Angus Young and ACDC. I think you've all heard this one before. It goes a little something like this. One, two. That's how you play that one. So it uh, starts with an E power chord. After the mutes at the beginning, there's like an eight count, right? And you're gonna hit a mute on each count except for the last two. Three, four, five, six, one, two. E power chord. Then you're gonna drop into a D chord, a little down, up, down, not really worrying too much about the high E string here. Right, a little down, up, down, then choke it off. Then into an A power chord. Do the exact same thing, a little down, up, down, choke it off. 
and then we have this little lick. So third fret of the high E, off to open, do the same thing on the B string. Quick little bend release of the second fret of the G, off to open, before dropping right back into E and starting the riff again. Now this time we have this bit of a finger stretching lick. Right before going back into E and starting the riff again. So uh, second fret of the A string up to the fourth fret of the low E. And then you're just gonna chromatically ride that up to five, then up to six, and then up to seven. Now when you get to the seven, you do not need both fingers on at the same time. It's almost impossible unless you got a stretch like that. So you can kind of lift off of that two of the A and then just jump up to that seven for a slide out of it, right? Right? So you're kind of holding that two when you're going on the, the four, five, six, but when you get to the seven, you can kind of let go of that two, jump up to the seven and slide out of it. Right, so that's that little lick. Back into the rip. Right, and you repeat that, I don't know how many times during the first verse in the opening, maybe six times. And then we uh, drop into the chorus. Or pre-chorus, I suppose. A to an E power chord into B. And then off to A, and then back onto B. Right, repeat. Then you go to into G, down to D. Off of that D, you're going to go into A, then grab the third fret of the low E, that G note, and then back to A. Right? And repeat that. Now, this G chord, we're kind of holding a full G chord, right, with our index here on the second fret of the A string, but you're, you're kind of muting the A string with the pad of your middle finger, which is on the third fret here, so you're really not hearing that A string ring out, right? So you repeat that twice, and then back to A to E to B, and then the end of the chorus, G, 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 D, 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 and then back into the riff. is how you play back in black. Let's move on to Guitar World's number two greatest guitar riff of all time. All right then, Guitar World Magazine's number two greatest guitar riff of all time is Crazy Train by uh, Randy Rhodes and Ozzy Osbourne. Now, uh, still in standard tuning, this track starts with bass. Right, second fret here of the low E, up to the fifth fret, off to open, double hits. Back onto the two, up to the five of the A, off to open, drop back onto that F sharp note, right, and you repeat that twice if you're playing bass. And uh, when the guitars finally do kick in, they kick in with this kind of jiggly little pick scrape up the uh, top three strings. So it kind of starts somewhere over the pickups, right, and just a little down, up, down. You know, something like that, and kind of move the pick down the fretboard, right? And then we drop into the main riff that everybody knows. Right? So, uh, all of this uh, opening riff is going on on the open E, 2nd fret, 4th fret, 5th fret of the low E, and the A string. We're going to start on the 2nd fret of the low E with a double hit. Then we're going to grab the 4 of the A onto the 5 of the A, back to the 4 of the A, each time bouncing back to this 2nd fret of the low E. Right, so that's the first half of the riff. And then we're going to kind of reverse it from the A to the uh, low E with a slight variation. We're going to go on to the second fret of the A, then we're going to go 5-4-5 five, five of the low E. Then 
you're going to go back to that second fret of the A, and then you're going to go five, four, open. Right, and then you repeat four times. And then the fourth time you're going to stop right there, kind of like a mid riff, right? And then you drop into a D chord, not worrying about the high E. And then into an E power chord here on the D and the G string at the second fret of the D, fourth fret of the G. Right, and then we're into the, uh, the verse riff. Right, might as well show you that. So a uh, couple of palm muted, a uh, little down, up, down on the uh, palm muted open A. Actually, you're hitting it four times, so it's more like a down, up, down, up. And then you're gonna grab this little A major triad here, seven, six, five of the uh, D, G, and B. Then you're gonna back it up to this little E chord here, barring the uh, fourth fret of the D, G, and B, dropping on to the six of the D and the five of the B. And then we're just gonna move that back two spots. To a D, right? And then off to an A power chord. Then you're gonna drop onto the four of the low E and back to the A power chord. Repeat it again, and then you do that little lick right there. And that's just all pull-offs right up the twos and fours. Right, but very quick. Four off to two off to open. Doing the same thing on the D string and then the A string. Right? And that's the verse riff. Right, and that is how you play Crazy Train by Randy Rhodes and Ozzy Osbourne. Let's have a look at number one. All right then, the number one greatest guitar riff of all time, according to Guitar World Magazine's poll, is Whole of Love, Jimmy Page, and Led Zeppelin. Now, there's kind of a simplified way of playing this one, and it was the way I played it for years and years and years, even though it was incorrect. Uh, it goes something like this. <laughs> Single notes, sliding into the 7 of the low E string, down to the 5 of the A, back to the 7, and then back to the 5. And going off to that 5, giving it a little bit of a waggle, right? And then dropping into an E power chord, hit the E power chord, triple chugs on the palm muted open E, and then you're going to hit the E power chord again and repeat that 7 times. And then back into the 7575. Five. Right? Uh, however, there's a little bit more going on with it than, than just that. And uh, when you go down to this 5 of the A, you're also catching the open D string along with it, which is it, it's the same note. Right? You're hitting those two notes together. And you're also giving this a small little bend, a little upwards bend of about a quarter step. And then you drop into the E. Gives it a little bit of dissonance and it also gives it a whole lot more weight, right? Seven times. Seven times. And then the vocals come in and you just continue with this riff. However, when we go into E, once the vocals have started, we're only going to hit it three times. And that just continues throughout the first verse. I don't know how many times you repeat that, maybe eight like that. And then when we drop into the uh, the chorus, the chorus is, uh, there's three guitars going on in the chorus. One is still playing the riff. Right. Another one is just going from D to E. Kind of loose, right? Right, and it repeats that four times. While another one is playing slide. 
right after the the D to E. Just seventh fret of the D and the G. And just kind of sliding out of it, right? So there's three guitars going on during the chorus. And uh, but let's stop there. That is the main riff and the first verse, right? Right, that is the riff to Whole lot of Love. And there you have it. That is how you play the top five greatest guitar riffs of all time, according to Guitar World magazine. Not according to me, but uh, I'd have a few changes, but it's a good list. I, I like this list. Uh, I can't argue with it a whole lot, but you know, we all have our own personal favorites. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. And uh, if you did, please hit that like button right down there. Maybe drop me a subscribe if you haven't done that already, as that'd be very kind. Hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world, and we will see you next time. Cheers.